How much do you pay attention to approval ratings? Well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I was paying attention in the, in the mid 60s. Now in the mid 40s, I, I don't pay attention. <laughs> President Biden claims he doesn't care about his approval ratings, but the next poll might make him pay attention. His approval rating has now fallen below his deeply unpopular Vice President Kamala Harris for the first time since their time in office. The president clocking in at 43% to Harris's 44%. The sad state of affairs for the White House is a major boon for the GOP, with Republicans becoming increasingly bullish on the prospect of a red wave in next year's midterms. You know, Rachel, I want to come to you first on this. Do you think it's inflation or maybe the crisis at the border or maybe just the inability to set an agenda and pass it that Americans can get behind? Why, why are Americans so down on President Biden and Kamala Harris, for that matter? Well, first of all, I just want to comment on Jimmy Fallon, how nice he is to Joe Biden. And remember, he had to <laughs> yeah. apologize for humanizing Donald Trump when he had him on. It's so interesting. Um, look, he is wildly unpopular. I think the first thing that happened that really made people stand up and go no more was what happened in Afghanistan. I brought that up in the last segment because I think it was just so emblematic. But there is nothing that has gone right. For me personally, I think the biggest issue is the loss of freedom that we've experienced over the last couple years. Um, it's, it's this normalization of the government taking control of our lives, whether it's when and if we can go to church, um, when we can open our businesses, yeah. if our kids can go to school. This is outrageous. And frankly, um, look, I think there's going to be a huge wave for, for Republicans. There's no doubt in my mind. The question is, do they deserve it? And what will they do with that mm. power? Because with just a few exceptions, Rand Paul, um, Senator Ron Johnson, who's been a hero um, in the Senate, uh, Jim Jordan, I don't hear Republicans talking enough about our loss of freedom, about the, the road that we're on, I believe, um, to a Chinese, ch communist Chinese credit score system. Hmm. Um, all of these things that are happening that are so scary and so non-un-American, um, these are the things I want to hear Republicans talk about for them to deserve our vote. Of course, I'd vote for them over what I see here, which is absolute failure um, on the part of the, de uh, the Democrats. I don't see one thing that Biden's doing right. But I would like to see more from Republicans in terms of speaking up for the liberties that we've lost over the last two years. That's powerful. And it's absolutely right. We should be able to sit here and say, man, I'm excited about what this politician brings to the table instead of holding our nose and voting for whoever, you know, hasn't made our life worse today. Tyrus, I remember in 2019 sitting there going, you know, only Donald Trump could lose this next election for Donald Trump. Then we got hit with a virus. And things kind of changed. And I think the virus was a big part of why he lost the election in 2020. Can Republicans, uh, you know, what can they do to prevent themselves from hitting this red wave? Because the map sure looks good for them. Well, I mean, first of all, yeah, I, I don't, it doesn't matter who was president during a pandemic. You're, you're not going to see that through, even yeah. though I, uh, I thought President Trump did an outstanding job in terms of getting uh, the vaccinations going and, and getting people an opportunity to get better faster. And his focus was always on getting America back to work. People heard that, they got behind that, and they believed in that. This administration, the, you know, they, all they, their entire thing was to undo everything he did. The only thing I would tell him you want to undo, maybe just don't like, undo a like on one of his tweets, because <laughs> his deeds, the deeds, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the deeds outweigh the tweets. And That's now right. we're seeing no deeds and no <laughs> tweets, so we can't even to get entertained while we're being treated miserably. Here's the thing, though. To be fair, to be fair, President Joe is more like neck and neck with VP. You know what I'm saying? It's like within an air of one to two points. Bear, yeah. I can tell you right here's some here's something free. You want to get ten points right now? Ten points right now on those polls? Simple. All you gotta do is go to the camp when you're on vacation, sit up at the beach, and be like, hey, previous administration. Whoever was in charge was running since we got rid of you guys. We're going to bring you back. We want to pick your brain about the border. Bring back some yeah. of your old, some of the things that you were doing right, and we're going to get it right. We are bad. We're going to stick with that. We got the border locked down. That in itself is accountability, knowing what's right, and you're going to get some points back for that. Try that. Deeds. Get some I, deeds done. I think they would love to get 10 points in any way they can right now. Dr. Sapphire, we just talked about how President Biden and Kamala Harris probably were elected based on this premise that they'll bring some sort of resolution to coronavirus. Here we are a year into it. We, we know exactly where we sit. We're in boxes. We're not sitting at a table in New York City right now. Has, has President Biden done anything to validate that narrative from the 2020 election in this last year? 
Well, Joey, the reason that he is now below, I guess, Tyrus, he's neck and neck, but he is technically below VP <laughs> Harris, and that is because uh, the way that he's handled the pandemic, and in that it has been, he completely has politicized the virus. He blamed the unvaccinated for spreading it. Now that Democrats are actually getting breakthrough infections, you even have Washington Post saying, no, 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 we shouldn't be shaming people for getting COVID. Well, we shouldn't have been shaming anybody <laughs> all along. They catered yeah. to the teachers' unions that kept children out of school. They've completely flubbed the booster rollout, which caused two high-level FDA administrators to actually leave. And now that we have Omicron here, that we have the high amount of immunity in the population, a milder variant, and now is the time that we should say, hey, it's time to move forward. But Fauci and Biden just can't get out of the way. The best thing that they could do coming into the midterms is to remove these federal mandates, because as we know, we have COVID circulating in the vaccinated, the unvaccinated, and even the boosted. The, re the message needs to be do what you can to protect yourselves, protect your families, but we're going to get out of the way. We're going to remove yeah. that OSHA mandate. We're going to pull back on a lot of these lawsuits and let states take for, take accountability for their people and get people back to work because these mandates cause the worker shortages, which is what is causing this complete spiral out of control right now. You know, Richard, build back better. BBB is DOA. Inflation is no longer transitory. And Governor Abbott's building us a wall down there. What can Democrats do to, to get some momentum on their side or just to, to tweak Americans' interest in possibly voting for one of them here in just about a year and a half? Well, I think that's a great question, and I agree with Tyrus and the, the idea that you have to have some deeds here, but let's be very clear. If you <laughs> voted for Donald Trump in the last election, you're not going to vote for Joe Biden for his re-election. So <laughs> let, Joe Biden should have talked to those voters and instead should focus on the 78 million people that got him to the White House. And that means he has to, he has to deliver on the promises he made to those voters. He made a promise to fix student loan debt in this country. He made a promise to ensure and secure voting rights for African Americans and people of color all across this country. He made a promise that he was going to have a conversation with the base that got him to the game, which were African-American voters. And now, more than ever, the president needs to talk to his base. If he's talking to his base, he will have a good midterms. If he stops talking to his base, he won't. And I thought what was very interesting in this poll was this. Every elected leader in Washington was negative, outside of John Roberts, the chief justice of the Supreme Court, who's not elected and appointed, and he runs away from politics as fast as he can. Well, maybe you should talk to Joe Manchin if he wants to know where Americans are, is based or not. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.